How you doing? This is Neil from iPaintGirls.com and in this series I'm going to be going through the basics of Photoshop and all the different tools and the things that you need to know that's necessary for you to get working with digital painting, comic books, um, photo manipulation, photo restoration, photo editing and so forth. At first Photoshop can seem daunting so don't be uh, put off by that because it really isn't that hard once you start to you know get used to interface and the and the little things here and there everything starts to fall into place and make sense and that's what I'm gonna help you do by the end of this series I think you'll understand Photoshop enough that you'll you'll love it and you'll get right in there and start doing everything it's important that as you're watching this series you actually go through and and do these stuff or do the things that I'm talking about go in and and, and click on the things I'm telling you to click on and pretty much do what I'm doing that way you get used to using the program that's how you actually train your brain just watching won't be enough to really train your brain to start using the program now the interface you're looking at here is actually CS5 I finally upgraded to CS5 and I like it a lot I like the new features and the reason why I did is I finally got a new computer that has a quad core processor and a good graphics card if you have a good graphics card before we get started I want you to do this up here on the top click on left click left mouse click on edit scroll down to preferences and then left mouse click on performance. For now on when I say click, I mean left mouse click. So click on performance. This brings up this window here. In this little box, check by clicking enable OpenGL drawing. This will enable your graphics card. That way you can now use your graphics card. Make sure you have a good graphics card though. Otherwise, you know, it's not gonna, you know, work right for you and you're gonna get errors and stuff. Under advanced settings, have normal, but you might also want to check basic if for some reason you get aberrations like black squares showing up and whatnot. Then try the basic mode and see if that works. Uh, another thing you might want to do too is uh, if, if it's not working right for you and you know your graphics card is good is update your graphics card driver by going to your graphics card's website. Right now you're up and running and everything should be running a lot smoother. Go ahead and restart Photoshop after you do that. Close it down and restart it. And then also now you'll have access to like the 3D tools and whatnot. So let's get started here with what we're looking at. I want to start with the tool since on the left side here, since that's like the most important thing and what you're going to be using mostly. So you have your tools palette over here. Now to you can dock and undock palettes, but notice you have this little triangle up here in the in the little black bar. If you click that triangle, you change the the palette shape. Now it becomes extra wide and you have all these extra tools here. I don't like that look, so I'm gonna go ahead and click it back to here. This way I have more screen more screen room. Now to undock a palette, you just simply grab the black part here, click it left with mouse, hold down the left mouse button, and then pull away and let go of the left mouse button. Now you have undocked it. You can also grab here where you see the little dots there. You can grab there, pull it, and you can dock this back. Now notice this is something that might be confusing at first. I'm going to show it over here because it's easier to understand. But anyway, you pull this over here until you see that blue line, and now it's docked again. I'm going to go ahead and undock the right side over here. So you have different uh, pa uh, panels over here as well that you can use for you know different things. To put things in there, you go to Windows. These are all the different panels you have to choose from. I'm going to grab the, the black bar here, left mouse click and pull away, and then let go of the mouse, left mouse button. I've undocked it now. Now to dock this whole thing back there again, I'm going to show you how to do that. It, it really depends where you grab on the black bar here. If I grab over here, I can dock right away. If I grab way over here, I have to pull it all the way over there just to dock it. So it's important where the tip of that white arrow is, that's where it's docked. And the tip of the white arrow needs to be right here in this white region. So if I grab, let's say, in the middle of this window, of this panel here, I pull it over here until my white arrow meets right there. Then you see that blue line show up. Now I let go and it's docked. Let's say I just wanted to undock this part here. To do that, you don't grab the black part because that will pull the whole window as before. Instead what you do, let's go ahead and dock this back again. Instead what you do is you grab the little dotted lines and that's how you pull off a panel like so. I can also grab this one and pull it off. Now I have three separate panels here. This whole section here and then these two here. Let's say I don't like that. I want to put it back together again. It's really easy. I just grab the dotted lines here, pull up until I see that blue line show up, and I let go, and now they're connected again. So if I grab the black part here, you notice they're, they're one panel now. I'm going to do the same thing here by, actually, I don't, I don't want to grab the uh, 
dotted lines, if I do, it pulls that away from here. I, I want those to stay together. So I need to carefully grab somewhere on this black box here, probably on the top, like so, and then move it over here until my arrow is right on the edge of this here, and you'll see that blue line show up. And this is based on where that arrow is at. The tip of that white arrow has to be right there on the edge, and then let go, and then now they're docked together. Now all this is one piece again. What if I grab here, though, this, this part here, the gray part, I can pull it down, and I've taken all these, you know, these different panels out. But what if I wanted to put it back the way it was, and I actually mess up? Let's say I grab the gray part again, and I accidentally put it all together. Now, oh man, I didn't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply left mouse click on color, let's say, and I'm going to drag that out, and I'm going to let go of the left, the left mouse button. So cool, now I have taken that one out. I'm also going to take swatches out, I'm going to put swatches back with this. Now notice, if I put it up here, it's going to go above it. Grab the swatches again. See, so you saw the blue line that was above it, but if I wait until I see the blue squares, like that, going all the way around it, then it's going to go inside of that panel. So now I have inside that little window panel. Now I have those two together. Now I just simply grab the, uh, I can grab here, or I can grab here, it really doesn't matter. The important part here is that where, what you see, whether you see the blue square, that's not what I want because I'm going to put them all back together again. I want to go until I see that blue line right above like that. Then let go. Now it's above there. So voila. But what if I wanted to switch these? Like I just did it uh, as I push pause. You just simply grab the part here. Go back up here right now. Oops. Let's say I wanted to pull my colors below this down here. So I just grab the by the, by the uh, gray bar here come down here until I see that blue line and now it's below so you can easily go above and below like that I'm gonna pull it back over here so I can dock it back together and so that's how you can you know dock and undock things it's also true for the actual image I have open which opens as it's docked I can just simply grab the gray part with the left mouse button drag away and let, let go now I have it undocked this allows me to minimize it which will go off screen to my other monitor I'm just going to simply click that same button you just saw me click, but I'm going to do it off screen and bring it back. All I did was click this button here. It, it, it would go down here if you only had one monitor. Right, so that's that. I'm going to go ahead and redock by dragging up here until I see that blue square and let go. If I open another document, you'll notice now I did, I did that on pause. I open another document. I have two documents now here at the top. I can just simply click on them to switch between my documents. But let's say I wanted to copy something from one to the other, but I wanted to actually copy, let's say, her face like this, but I wanted to drag it by using now the, this move tool up here to the new one. So I can simply pull this away, as we did before. Then I can go back to this, you know, click back on this again to highlight it, pull this into this document, and there's her face. Voila. So it's that easy. I'm going to go ahead and close this out and not save it. Okay. Now the other things that we have to look at, we went through here, you have all your different tools. Now you'll notice that on the on this panel here with your different tools, you have black arrows next to some of them. That means if you left mouse click and keep it held down, it brings up a new, win a new little window here where you can choose other types of tools from each of those tool sets. The ones that don't have that, if you hold it down, it won't, it won't show you anything. Notice this one has this quick selection tool, but there's no it's hard to see the little arrow because it's running right into it, but it's there. Then you have those tools, so you can just see you have all these different tools to choose from. We'll go through these tools and what they and what they do, and as it pertains to what you want to do with Photoshop. Right. So on the right side over here, we have swatches we can we can you know set, and then at the top, you know different panels we can set. Then at the top here, we have this new thing that wasn't in other versions of, I, it might have been in CS4, I don't know, I never used CS4, but it wasn't in CS3. Up here you have your screen modes. This was typically down here, connected to this uh, toolbar here. It was down on the left side over here. But now there's a little icon here you can choose from your screen mode. So it's full screen mode. And then if you hit tab button, while in full screen mode, it'll bring your things back up. If you hit F, you can go back to regular screen mode, or you can just hit tab and then go here and go back to standard mode. Now another mode that's really important is full screen mode with menu bar. I like using this. This is what I usually uh, work in. Now once you're in this mode, you can hold down the left, or excuse me, hold down the space bar on your keyboard, and then you have the little hand icon. You can also choose the hand icon from over here on your on your tools 
palette. I'm going to go ahead and hold down the space bar to bring it up. Now notice I can pull up here to where the center is going to grab a color if I can demonstrate something. That now I can paint on the edges of the document. You know that you can't do that in any other screen mode. So that really comes in handy. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, Control Z to undo. In this case, I have my uh, settings changed, my uh, keyboard shortcuts. I have my keyboard shortcut under Edit. So I have uh, Step Backward as Control Z instead of Undo because I like ba Back Step is better because you can go back a bunch of times. Right, so that's pretty much it for this video. We'll go ahead and go through more of what everything is and what we're looking at and how to use the tools and what they and what they do and stuff like that and different settings you can change on the menus and whatnot in this series. So stay tuned for that. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a comment. Let me know uh, that you've enjoyed so far this series. This is actually going to be a series that comes out for pay, so it's going to be like five bucks or seven dollars. Or anyway, thank you.